We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we've got a co topic that recently came up on our Tabletop Bellhop Patreon patron-only Discord server about train games. That is, the topic of defining what exactly a train game is. Now, while this only recently came up on Discord, this is a topic that has popped up a number of times since we started the show, uh, mainly when reviewing games, specific train games. Um, plus, many times before I was the tabletop bellhop, just in my gaming career and going to conventions and being a gamer involved in the community, for some reason, this is a popular recurring discussion or sometimes argument that the board game community seems to like to have over and over again, like uh, role-playing game edition wars and talking about what's better, Star Wars or Star Trek, or who wins a race between Superman and the Flash. We should point out that it does seem to be a matter of human nature. People mm. feel more comfortable when they can speak in absolutes. Flash is the fastest person running on a solid surface. Star Trek is the far superior intellectual science fiction canon. Uh, no starting those arguments tonight on my part. We'll just let Sean have his own opinions. Now, before we get into our thoughts on the matter, what I did is I actually reached out as part of my research and asked people on social media, what do you think is a train game? What do you define as a train game? And I was actually surprised that, that most people were, uh, I don't want to give away which side we're on yet, but I was surprised by the, the comments. We'll, we'll say that. So what we're going to do is share some of those comments on what people think we mean when saying a train game. So, Ari Covert says, having played with expert train gamers, train game apparently means a combination of games with trains in them, pick up and deliver games, route building games, economic games where you can buy and sell stocks, and games where you move cubes on a map. Okay. Ticket to Ride, for example, is not a train game. Iron Dragon is. Next, I got a comment from Red Meeple Ryan, fan of the show, in our chat room tonight. Any game where the direct development of or delivery along trade routes is a prominent part of gameplay. Games where financial speculation on routes and cargo are prominent are stock games. Now, Mike Tamonin says, if someone tried to entice me by telling me it was a train game and there wasn't a train involved somewhere, <laughs> I'd be upset. Ticket to Ride, Last Spike, any of the 18xx games, any of the Mayfair Crayon games, but there's got to be a train in it. Mike Nathanachak notes, a train game is a game with trains, specifically locomotive ones. People are just lazy and want to use it as a shorthand for a particular type of game or combination of mechanisms. Now, I did ask for a definition of what combination of mechanisms, but I haven't heard back at least at this point. Uh, Ian Borchardt says, a game with train tracks at a minimum. I do consider Rail Baron to be a train game. Tommy Ray, a game where the primary component, mechanism, or gameplay involves train or engine that rides on rails. B. Lin says, a game with paths, tracks, that the players want to control for scoring. I like that one because that is completely different from yeah. everyone else's example. I, I actually like that someone, there's a specific game that comes to mind for that definition, which, which I think is really interesting. Now, Peter Schott said trains are involved. It's a pretty broad definition with so many games involving trains that appeal to different people. I'm not going to assume much more. Fair. Now, Tommy Ray says a game where the Oh, I think I had that one already. Sorry. Oh, did we do? Oh, we did. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, my bad. <laughs> that's my bad i had so many of these and i was trying to organize yep. them so sean and i could go back and forth all right we'll skip that one jump to this so board game geek is of course where i went so i just googled train games board game geek and what i got was train games often involve gameplay and imagery related to railroads and rail vehicles many of the most popular train games are set in the late 19th and early 20th century although some games like lunar rails are set in the future now, Board Game Geek also has a definition separate from that. In uh, they actually have a glossary. There is a there is actually a Board Game Geek glossary that I happened across today, <laughs> where they say train game noun, a game that features route building and or picking up and delivery of commodities along particular routes as the main mechanisms. The crayon rail games like Empire Builder and Euro Rails are good examples of train games. 
I like that one actually quite a bit. Now, I'd like to add in the Wikipedia definition because there is one. A train game or railway game is a board game that represents the construction and operation of railways. Train games are often highly involved hobby games that take several hours to play. Like war games, train games represent a relatively small niche in the games market. For the record, don't look up the Urban Dictionary definition. But I digress. Yeah, well, we're not going to touch that one tonight. So I, I don't know. That just kind of felt like it was all going in circles and everyone's got a different opinion. So I don't think that was really getting us anywhere. So what I want to do for us now is take a different approach. Instead of trying to define it, let's break down what are the elements of a board game, what mechanics, what game types are most associated with train games. Like what are the things that make a train game a train game? Obviously, besides the fact it just has a train in it, because <laughs> That, that that's assumed i think at this point or maybe not actually because some people seem to think some games without trains are train games well i think one thing that comes up in the majority if not every single one is route building yeah that's really what most people i think think of uh when they think of train games other than a few of the very niche definitions we've run into yes. yeah you are putting something on a map connecting cities connecting delivery points connecting something and i've got to admit almost every train game i got a pile of them behind me has that aspect to it i i would almost go so far as to say if you if someone generically says it's a train game to me if i don't know their definition of train game i'm gonna assume they're talking about a road building game of some sort now, that would be my default now next up is one that is common but not necessarily universal and that's mm -hmm. pick up and deliver because there's a lot of games that aren't train games where there's also still pick up and deliver. Yeah. Plus the opposite. There's a huge, very important section of train gaming that has no picking up and delivering. And that is 18 XX games, 18 XX. You're just connecting routes and there's a huge stock market thing and a bunch of other stuff, but there's no picking up a red cube and delivering it to the red city. That is not an aspect of the 18 XX games. Now where that comes out is in the, uh, what they, the age of steam, the steam games and railways of the world and there, there's a whole batch of games in there that's their main part yes you're building routes but you're building routes to pick up and deliver something so pick up and deliver definitely not a requirement for a train game but often common in train games i think is where i would go with now one thing i think a lot of people have come to associate with train games and this is an interesting one for me is owning stocks in companies yes that is the part that is the major part of 18xx so the 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 concept that you are not running a train company rather you are a rail baron investing in train companies trying to end the game with the biggest portfolio now that aspect is still in games like steam just the way the economy works and the loan system works and the auction for actions kind of simulates that you're not actually taking stocks and holding stocks and there's no trying to figure out majority shares, but it is actually simulated. And I'll mention later exactly why, but I personally think there's an aspect of this even in games like Ticket to Ride that most people may not realize because it's so abstracted there. But yes, a big part of many train games is the, the economy, the stock market. Now, the next uh, mechanic is in some ways linked with pick up and deliver or often is. And that is completing contracts. Yes. But that is also linked to route building. So it's also the you get some bonus if you are able to connect this part of the board to this board. Now, that is the main goal of one of the lighter games we'll be mentioning tonight, but is also a big part of 18xx. And one of the things that changes when it separates one 18xx game from another is which routes exist and some bonuses for connecting set routes. And then there's games like German Railways or Last Train to Nuremberg, which I forgot to bring upstairs, where you get a huge bonus or sorry, first train to Nuremberg, not last, that wouldn't make sense. First train to Nuremberg is a, a route building game, really simple one, but you get a huge bonus if you are the first person to get your route to Nuremberg. But you don't necessarily win the game, it's just a bonus. So that to me counts as a contract. There is a goal to your, your route building that fits just as well as the, uh, the, the tickets and Ticket to Ride, where you are trying to complete different contracts or you get bonuses for, for completing them and you get a penalty for failing. That also exists in other games that aren't train games, don't have trains in them, but people sometimes consider train games. An example of that would be Shipyard, where you're actually moving boats, but there are definitely contracts to complete, and it's government contracts or personal contracts, and the end game scoring is all based on if you made ships that fit that contract. So next up, 
if you've got engines and you've got rail lines, you might as well be able to upgrade them. Yeah, and then again, this this to me goes back to um, your 18xx games, and as far as I understand, even some of the earlier crayon rails, your routes can only go so far until you improve your engines. That's a big part of a lot of train games, but it also applies to train games that defy that entire route building. There is a very solid one of my favorite games that has no route building, no pickup and deliver, no owning stocks, no completing contracts, but it's all about upgrading your engines and railroads. And that is Russian railroads and the expansion German railroads. And I got to say, I challenge most people to try to tell me that's not a train game. Uh, so next up, we have set collection. So this I've seen in some train games, um, whether that's a reward for delivering different colors of cubes or sets of cubes, or you're trying to collect stocks of different companies. Even the, even the stock element is a bit of set collection. Do you decide to collect stocks from all the different companies in play, or do you go for a huge majority stock in a single company? That's one aspect of it. And then, of course, there's the do I take all the red cards so I can play a big red route later in the game? All right, well, let's move on and we'll look at some of the main types of train games. All right, so most train gamers, uh, talking about those heavy train gamers, seem to consider certain two, two types of games worthy of the name train game, the, the, the real train game groundyards. Um, and they tend to split them into two groups of main types of train games. And of course, we've mentioned multiple times already, but the 18xx games. These are epic, heavy, long games that use pretty much all of those mechanics we just went through. They incorporate to, to some amount, like definitely route building is a big part of it and owning stocks is a huge part of it. The pickup and deliver, like I said, I think are in some of them, but it's not a standard for 18xx, but I have seen them in other ones. Now, the, like I said, these are big. Um, these are extremely popular to a very small crowd, um, kind of like the war gamers who only play Starfleet Battles uh, or who only play Advanced Squad Leader, right? This game has a huge learning curve. Um, I challenge almost anyone to try to learn them from the books from the first time. I've done it myself. To me, 18xs games are so involved that they're almost a, need a verbal tradition. You almost need an 18xx expert to teach you to play. Because one of the things none of the rule books tell you how to play is how to play well. well. And putting a new player against experienced 18xx players is just a disaster. Because of all this, because of the learning curve, because of the, the, the thickness of the rule books, the complexity of the rules, the number of moving parts, the number of things you have to watch at once, the fact they are extremely cutthroat, they are, they are not happy, friendly rail building games, uh, they are not actually all that popular. There is a crowd that loves them, but not a big crowd. And so those are the 18xx series of games. And I should point this out because I, you know what? It took a long time before anyone pointed it out to me. Uh, the reason it's 18xx is 99% of these games are set in the 1800s because that was the age of rail when they were trying to make the Trans-America Railway and the Canadian Railway. All, and... all based off of 1829, I believe, was the original. So it was either 1829 or 1830. 1830 is the most well-known, but I think there might have been one before it. But like most of these games are like, you'll find 18 various numbers, but then you'll find other ones like 18 Chesapeake, which is set in a certain time. And there's 18 AZ, which I think takes a small section of Arizona. There are hundreds of these. For how small a market it is, there are a surprisingly large number of 18xx games. Now, the next big type of train game is the crayon rails. This is the predecessor to modern train games. And to be honest, the predecessor to almost every modern route building game. These did it first. Um, Empire Builder is the most well-known, most famous, possibly the first one. I'll admit I didn't deep dive what was the first crayon rail game. But these are the stuff that, that my parents and my grandparents played. Like the, you're going back 60s and 70s train games here. And these are all about route building. You have a map of whatever area with a bunch of dots on it, and you literally use a crayon to draw your routes between the dots. Um, most of these don't have any goods to pick up. There's no stocks, though they do tend to feature a detailed economy of some type, like how many roads you can build or your bonus you get for making connections, how much it spends to go through difficult terrain or over a mountain and stuff like that. Uh, interestingly, uh, Empire Builder is the first, and oddly, I, I thought so. It's actually 1980. 
I uh, I could have sworn I read something about them being in the seventies. So well, BGG's list of crayon games. Let me sit. Let me okay. let me put it. BGG's list of crayon games shows Empire Builder as the first at nineteen eighty. Uh, Interesting, but I don't I know. Could have sworn it was seventies, or maybe it's based on something. Fair enough. All the, right. The newest one being Martian Rails in two thousand and nine. Wow, that's that's actually newer than I thought. <laughs> I've got a copy of Empire Builder. It's back there. I swear it was older than that. Like I remember it well. In nineteen eighty, I was only five years old, but I remember my dad playing it with with friends for years. So right. fair enough. Well, that is the crayon rails games. Yes. So those are the two big categories. Like in general, when you say train games, those are the two big ones. Now, most other train games fall somewhere on the scale of crayon to eighteen XX, and to be honest, beyond that. So, like, think of visible light and how you got ultra ultraviolet and you got infrared. It's kind of like that. There's, there's crayon rails and 18XX, but technically you can kind of go past both of those. Now, Ticket to Ride is basically a simplified crayon rail, right? The, the, you're, not, you're, you're not using crayons. You're using little plastic trains, but it's basically a crayon rail game. Whereas Age of Steam and Steam and Railways of the World is kind of, it has the route building of crayon rails but then it adds in auctions and pickup and deliver mechanics so it's actually closer on the 18xx scale of train games now there's even the deck building game trains which you want to divert from an 18xx game you can't get much further away but you know what it's even got a lot of crayon rail elements because this is a deck building game that has a board and some of your cards let you put cubes out onto hexes and those cubes represent routes that you're building and they give you end game scoring so yeah, it's not what you'd initially think of when you think of an 18XX, but it is definitely a game theme devote train that has crayon rail elements of connecting routes. And that's, I, I think, where, where we're starting to actually hone in on something here. I actually think our proper definition of chain games may lie with any game derived from old crayon rail games, whether that's the 1980s Empire Builder or future ones. And this is where the argument that the train gamers like to use that Crower Grid is a train game actually makes sense. Where normally I would argue this to my dying days, but Power Grid was based on Empire Builder. And the original prototype versions of Power Grid before they got out to market actually had the players using crayons to draw your connected power plants on the map. And it didn't matter if you had a map, it just mattered if you had the grid, the line, which is, actually makes the game name make a little more sense than the modern one because all you were worried about was the power, the power grid itself and not actually building individual factories. And to be honest, like it's almost the way most modern role-playing games are in some way inspired by and based on Dungeons and Dragons. And the same reason a lot of people call every role-playing game out there, to some people's chagrin, Dungeons and Dragons. But then the definition of a role-playing game shouldn't be any game based on Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Uh, and similarly, while maybe any game derived from Crayon Rail game is a train game, mm -hmm. there are definitely a number of train-themed games out there that have nothing to do with that original True. system. And what about games derived from the original concept that have gone in different ways? Mm -hmm. If you take Empire Builder and reskin it into a game about airplanes, is it a train game? To most train gamers, it is. That, that's the power grid argument, right? Like you, you are changing it, but you are still building routes or you are still owning stocks. And like looking even at that. So, so let's, say, let's say I did want to go with crayon, crayon rails. Well, where's Russian railroads filling? I talked about that one earlier. That there's no crayon, there's no rope building, you're still building tracks, you're still improving engines, you're actually going to cities, you're, you're not delivering goods, but as you move through cities, you get to upgrade them. Those are all huge aspects of 18xx games. But Russian Railroads has nothing in similar to a crayon rail game to me at all. Or Yardmaster, which is a, a, a uh, drafting game where you're building your cargo train and selecting which cargo goes in. Or if you really want to stretch it, is Train of Thought which is a word game with a train theme where you have little dry erase choo-choos where you're writing in the smoke. It's a party game. How does that fit? Or another one, I threw this one behind me because I'm like, it's got trains in it, Colt Express. It's a programmed movement train heist game that has a 3D train in it. Is that a train game? Or Rail Pass. It's, it's a lightning quick game that plays in under 10 minutes. How do I compare a 10-minute game to a 10-hour 18xx game? Uh, and I even saw when we were discussing this uh, a week or so ago, uh, Mexican train game, the Domino's yeah. game was listed as a train game. And that's, I mean, 
Yeah, Me, you're you're out I, there. Yeah, I mean that's really stretching it, but I've seen it defined as a train game. I will say, actually, Mexican Train does have one element that's similar to the eighteen X games, where you don't necessarily own a route. You have to play a domino, and you can add to other routes. What's well, right? You do. You own your train, but if you can't match your own, you have to build someone else's route. So that's yep. an element of of those route building games that actually might fit in there. Now, I'm sure there's some gamers out there probably screaming at us right now, or if they even listen to our show anymore, are screaming, those aren't train games. But I got to say, why not? Right? Like I said, Russian Railroads, I'm building track, I'm upgrading engines, I'm founding towns, I'm improving them. It, it's all stuff in an 18X. Yardmaster, I'm building rail cars of different goods and values, and I'm going to get points on the load I can deliver at the end. No, I don't necessarily deliver, but it's got that theme of delivery. Rail Pass, I am, it's a pickup and deliver game. And I almost want to say it's the most pure pickup and deliver game because you literally physically load a train, pick it up, and deliver it to another player, possibly even going through a train tunnel on the way to the other player. Like you do that, you pick it up and actually deliver the train. And I've even heard a number of people, a surprising number of people, claim that Ticket to Ride isn't a trade game. I want to point this one out in particular because Ticket to Ride is actually about investing in different train companies through drafting cards of different colors and building routes to connect cities on the map to complete contracts. If instead of plastic trains, you had to use crayons to draw the routes and the blue train cards were represented by B&O stock certificates and the red train cards were represented by CH&O stock certificates, would those train gamers consider it a train game then? Because that's all it is, is a simplified theme. And I'm certain they would, but again, it's not framed that way to them. So yes, it misses the point. Which maybe that's a mark. Maybe, maybe Days of Wonder, if you're listening, put out a, a statement about it. Like, honestly, put an, like, an 18xx themed version of Ticket to Ride. I like, I think they've done it because 18 or sorry, Ticket to Ride Pennsylvania added the stocks in. And Pennsylvania is one of the most well known railroads and one of the most popular 18x. I think that was their attempt to reach out to that market. Honestly, after all this, like looking at all of this, yeah, there's some argument for the crayon rail thing. Like I can, I can at least see that. I can see a, a, a train of thought as we were going along with earlier that makes that kind of make sense to me. But to, honestly, for it to be a train game, it has to have trains. It has to be prominent. Like if there's trains, planes, and automobiles in the game, then it's transport game. It just has to have trains. And I, I, how you use the trains doesn't matter as long as there's trains. Now, having train theme mechanics like the ones we mentioned earlier is going to give a train game more of a train theme and a train feeling, and it's gonna gonna be more thematic. I don't think they're necessary. For me, for a game to be considered a train game, it needs trains in it. Well, similarly to the classic geek debates of who would win in a fight, the Hulk or Wolverine, I'm not sure there is a right answer here in regards to defining what a train game is. Different people seem to want and insist on the term train game meaning different things. And I think what we really need to ask is why. Now here's where I'm gonna go a little deep here. I am sorry to say that I think a big part of this is just people's egos. People like to feel special. And there's a segment of gamers that feel that the games they play somehow set themselves apart and somehow above other people. They don't want the big, heavy, thinky games they played compared to some mass market game you can buy at Walmart that you can bring home and play with your kids and your grandma. They want to hold on to that feeling of being special and they're smart and they play hard, difficult games and they're part of uh, Puffing Billy or the, the secret club and only we really get what it means to play a real train game. And I've got to say, we're not usually explicit on this show, but that's total f The games you choose to play do not make you any more of a gamer than anyone else. And no game you play makes you a better person than someone else. The same arguments are used by people trying to say one way of eating, drinking, or anything else people do is better than another. People want to be special, superior, and don't like to have their understandings or beliefs challenged. Now, people really feel the need to categorize things. And I know as humans, we do it. We want to put things into little buckets. If you need to do that with train games, why not use terms like 
it's like an 18xx game or it's 18xx light or it's really heavy or you know it's similar to age of steam or it uses a lot of age of steam mechanics or it's a family family trend game or this is a train game your kids would enjoy or it's a great gateway route building game or an excellent pick up and deliver game that's a next step from ticket to ride to me all of those are way more useful instead of arguing over what should or shouldn't be a train game yeah for us train game is simply a game that features trains in it and we're fans of all kinds of different train games from the simple ticket to ride new york all the way up to 1830 railways and robber barons and many games in between well, that's all for our discussion today on what we mean when we say train games.